Hey, everybody, we are live at Pace Studios right now in New York with Amigo the Devil. Man, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, Appreciate yeah. We're uh, sort of uh, crossing crossing paths uh, <laughs> between between here and Texas. We've just arrived uh, here from basically your your hometown. You're from the uh, hill country outside of Austin, and uh, and we have just come from there, and we're stoked to be hosting you here in this uh, in our in our tape library here. Thank you, and I hope uh, brought some good dust back with you. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Dust. We did. We did. Um, uh, so you're going to do four songs today. Uh, two of them are from Everything Is Fine, which is the current record, and two of them are from Volume One, which is uh, which is forthcoming. Uh, it's in pre-order right now. And uh, can you tell us what's coming up first? So first, I figure we start off with the most depressing track because that's the best way to kick off a party. Sure. Um, this is definitely the most personal song I've ever written. It's, it's called Cocaine and Abel. And... Um, it's been probably the, the one that took the most adjustment to play live because of what it is for me. So I've never had a song that meant that much personally. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Love to hear it. Distance from the man that I am To the man I want to be The time it takes to realize Time is the distance I need But I was born impatient And I was born unkind But I refuse to believe I have to be the same person I was born when I die Cause change is alright Change is alright I'm not proud of all the choices I've made For a lot of my life Following the shadow when I damn well know that behind me's the light. But I've lied to my mother. I've made people feel like hell. But I refuse to believe I have to keep being cruel. Cause I'm a coward myself. And time is not patient. No patience takes time Excuses will only do good If you're waiting around to die And everyone is born with self-worth How easily it turns to doubt It takes letting go of what we know We can't live without But the blood in the water It is the blood of my brother We both learned It didn't mean a thing In the end If one was thicker than the other And I've tried having faith But I'll rot like a dove Cause I've always been scared Of loving someone Just a little bit more Than I'm loved Losing is fine Everything is fine Thank you, man. 
Has that been, uh, how much time has, has elapsed between, between writing it, performing it and right now? I mean, have you been living with that song for a little while or is this still, um, is it every single time you play it out, does it get, do you have that same feeling of, of apprehension before sharing something that's so personal to you? There's a strange, uh, halfway point between, um, kind of like a release and, and burden essentially on something like that so I, I wrote the first half and and had the first half written for a little while and and I knew that it was just kind of like a ditty that, that made me feel good when I played it because it felt uh, redeeming somehow and then the second half while we were writing the the, the record itself it, it kind of came together in a different way than I expected it to because at first I thought it was going to be this weird saga of like admission or whatever you want to call it, and um, it just turned out being like a directional support system for for every time I feel real weird about what I'm doing, or like if something comes to me that isn't really on, you know, on brand per se, with it, not even with music, just in life in general. Uh, you know, it made me feel like, all right, well, it's fine. You, you know, people evolve, people change, things evolve and, and all that. And so it uh, it's the first song that is, like, strictly meaningful to me in a selfish way. Where, like, I don't really care what happens to it beyond that. Um, it's, the, it's the first song I've, I've ever written where it's like, I'm okay with it. <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, well, there, dude, there's something really endearing. I think that comes across immediately. You know, if it's you're writing it for yourself and your own selfish reasons, then you know it's it's undoubtedly going to resonate and do something for somebody else. I mean, it did for me just now. I mean, I, I appreciate it very much. So, yeah, I think you're very much on the on the right track and doing all the right stuff, dude. Thanks for doing this. Um, so the second one you're going to do today is also off. Everything is fine. Um, it is. Yeah. Can you tell us what's coming up next? So it's, um, it's a love song that, you know, cause I, I always try to, I mean, I don't try to, I just, I end up writing a lot of love songs, I guess, because I love love. <laughs> um, but <laughs> now I, uh, I was thinking about all the relationships that, that had gone wrong at some point. And, and one of the easiest things to do when you're in the moment and you're stuck and by you, I mean myself, I can't speak for anyone else, but you know, when I was younger, I always blamed everything on everyone else. Like, everything went wrong because of everyone else. And, oh, if this relationship didn't work, it's it's because they are just pff, Looney Tunes. And, and that's so unfair because I never really sat down to that moment to think about, all right, well, what am I doing to make this person feel that way or react that way or feel disregarded to, you know, everyone has a catalyst for their actions and this was kind of the song where it's almost... This whole record really was kind of just me admitting like, oh, I was wrong a lot. I did some dumb stuff. And... Yeah, uh, both of us both of us were there all the time. It doesn't just <laughs> take one party to make this thing work like this. Yeah, and, and, and that's kind of the, the whole purpose of the next song. It's called If I'm Crazy. Um, and it was, it was just kind of like a, a compilation, per se, of, of all my past failures towards other people like all the times that I haven't been there for someone else for selfish reasons or whatnot and that kind of thing and it doesn't really come across directly as that but that's kind of where it, where it ended up or started sorry not ended up started all right <laughs> Don't act surprised if I disappoint you The poison we both have inside is the same Though we pretend, I know that we both knew There's no prize at the end of this game I gave up the ghost a long time ago It still haunts me I'm a goddamn mess for you to clean up But I like it and your dream turned into a nightmare when I crawled inside it And the whole world thinks I'm insane And it might be true But if I'm crazy 
I'm crazy for you We live in a castle made out of sand I stood there and wondered how much you can stand Both of us float in the same kind of dark But I was the storm and you were always the ark You've already heard everything that I've said I'm a man of my word and that word is regret So if I cut my lip when I bite the glass I'll tell everyone in the room that I'm fine It hurt for the first few times But at last I've learned to love a little blood in my wine Cause I'm a goddamn mess for you to clean up But I like it And your dream turned into a nightmare when I crawled inside it And the whole world thinks I'm insane And it might be true But if I'm crazy Oh, if I'm crazy If I'm crazy I'm crazy for you Goddamn mess for you to clean up, but I like it. And your dream turned into a nightmare when I crawled inside it. And the whole world thinks I'm insane, and it might be true. But if I'm crazy, oh, if I'm crazy, I'm crazy. I'm crazy for you. All right. Thank you. Um, man, so can we talk a little bit about, I think we're, we're moving from everything is fine over to, uh, over to volume one uh, next. Can you talk about, uh, some of the artists who've influenced you either just from the time you grew up, all of your all, some of your all time favorites or some of the artists you were listening to, particularly at the times you were writing, uh, the next tune that's coming up. I mean, I'll, it's choose your own adventure. However you want to answer <laughs> that question. And we're, you know, you know, we were just chatting about that Tom Waits tape and, yeah. uh, and all the stuff, all the rock and roll history and the friendly ghosts that are surrounding us right now. Um, who were yeah? Who are some uh, some of your favorites that, that really have made their way into into your sound? So uh, off the bat, just uh, the initial like uh, I'd say the, the obvious ones. Obvious, it's like Tom Waits, Nick Cave, um, Leonard Cohen kind of stuff. A lot of John Prine. I think John Prine is one of my favorite storytellers of all time. Um, but those weren't necessarily grown up. That was kind of what I found along the way. Um, as silly as it is, I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to listen to Meatloaf constantly. Yeah, dude. And I never realized until a little uh, a little while ago that, you know, Meatloaf was like a lot of storytelling. That was some wild storytelling and just really epic adventures. And, and I think that got into my blood a little bit. My all-time favorite, my number one is Fiona Apple. Just... Marissa, yeah, too. Are, time, I think you just I, made Marissa's day, absolutely. Cause. I think Fiona Apple is one of the most important musicians ever. Um, there was something incredibly unique about the honesty behind you know, the whole Fiona debacle, essentially. Like the whole career of Fiona. This amazing. I heard she's recording soon. I hope it's true. <laughs> I really hope it's true. Um, but yeah. then also I grew up listening to metal, like really, you know, way louder stuff like Carcass and things like that. That's kind of what I grew up listening to per se, where most of my records were like thrash or grind or just weirdo noise stuff. Growing up in Miami was weird because, cause I did, I grew up in Miami. Um, we didn't have a lot of bands coming down. We basically had, you know, a lot of, uh, like the EDM stuff was there already like you know it was huge and then we had a huge noise scene and that made me really happy 
until I grew up and realized most of it sounds like crap. <laughs> and I'm almost positive that most of it that I made my friends listen to was me being like, I just wanted an excuse to be like, well, if you don't get it, you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and secretly, I'm sitting there going, please stop. Oh, God. <laughs> That's how I feel now. But is um, and, and by that, I'm talking about like putting delay pedals on blenders and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like they're real. I'm nodding like I know what you mean, but I have not ever heard a record that did put a delay pedal on a, oh, on a blender. So and I bad. don't, yeah, I don't imagine it sounds good. So bad. <laughs> you know, for 15 seconds or so, but that, that, that tests, tests <laughs> the patience quite a bit. But, but yeah, Fiona Apple is a big one. A lot of storytellers, uh, like Marty Robbins. I love Marty Robbins so much. And then there's a lot of the humor based stuff. Like I saw here, Monty Python, Monty Python was huge for me when I was a kid. Yeah. That was just, that changed my entire joke repertoire like when i was a kid i was just like humor is different now i am now a different human and my humor has shifted and i'm sure everyone around me hated me for it but <laughs> yeah but i mean that's that's rare that you can point to one particular thing that shifts the entire entire oh, paradigm for you it doesn't happen that many in not that many times in life so that's it was, it was a fun one yeah yeah um, can you, so we're headed over to, if you guys are just joining us right now, uh, volume one is in, um, is in pre-order right now. Mm -hmm. It's coming out. It's, it's three EPs that are being re repressed as, as one, right. As, as volume one. Yeah. It all got remastered together. So it sounds nice. And before all the EPs were just different volumes, we did it different times. So everything's kind of uniform. We retract the whole thing. And nice. Can you tell what's the, what is, what song is coming up next? So this song called one kind of people. And uh, initially, it was an idea that I had for a bumper sticker. And I was like, well, I can't just sell bumper stickers, so i got to write a song to make sense of selling bumper stickers. And then that's, that's the truth behind this song. Um, and now it's just a fun one to play. <laughs> so, yeah, one kind of people. <laughs> There's only one thing in this life that makes us living. It's not the muscles or the size of your car. It's not the everlasting hope of finding purpose or knowing who we are. It starts with realizing death is just one moment. In the end, those two are all we really score. But I've heard you and me and the devil makes three. So hello to me you're looking for. And I never walked the line because I've always rather shoved it in my nose. <laughs> And I drink, therefore I am. At least I think that's how the saying goes. It doesn't matter what you've heard or if you're good or bad and everything between. If you have a lot of money, if you're funny or just 50 shades of mean. If you studied in the good book or you couldn't give a damn, you'd rather watch the movie, that's fine. Because there's one kind of people in this world People who die Some people follow rules Some people go around There's always gonna be a better high And a lower down There's always gonna be the people at the show Who paid to watch the whole thing from their phone <clears throat> And the only thing I know about that life I'm not about This life is a maze with only one way out And like the Catholic girl who turns the other cheek To keep the virgin in her name Or marrying for money goes to show Where there's a will, there's a way It doesn't matter what you've burned Or if you've ever been concerned about mistakes all the bridges in the world will lead you back to fix what couldn't be erased. If you're haggard with Merle when Katy Perry kissed a girl, or you buy your shit at REI, there's only one kind of people in this world, people who die. Oh, people who die, die, die. People who die. People who die, die, die People who die People who die
Oh, people who die. People who I wanted to make sure we didn't step on any of the any of the end of it with our clapping. I forgot y'all were sitting there. <laughs> wow, yes, we are all going to die, man. A message of hope. <laughs> Somehow the, the most hopeful uh yeah. thing way that I've ever heard we're all gonna die phrased. Man, I love that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Did you uh, are you familiar with Loudon Wainwright? Oh my and God. dude, so he was he was here not that long ago. It's got the the same feeling of of everything that he did about about that song, where it's just just about, uh, I mean, that's that you know, pitch black message, reality, but told in the most hopeful possible way where you just take it lightly. That's all, that's what it's going to be. That's what's happening. And, uh, oh, thanks right. for sharing that, man. It's like that, the, the, the meme with the guy at the table has changed my mind. Like, you can't, you can't argue that. Yeah. It's just true. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, this is a total pleasure, man. Thanks for this is our first session back from. We were just on on planes and bringing all this dust back from Texas uh, uh, yesterday. We're just now set up, so thanks for uh, for restarting the the New York sessions the right way. We thank uh, you for having us. Appreciate it very much. And we've got uh, you're gonna do a fourth, but so uh, bef- the fourth song is on both, right? It's on it everything is, on is fine, and it is also on volume one. Um, can you talk a little bit about the the production of Everything Is Fine? She started to tell me offline a little bit earlier about the uh, the studio, and it sounds like a fascinating analog experience. And uh, uh, like to know more about uh, what that recording process was like. Yeah, it was it was nutty. Um, so the producer Ross Robinson had this idea. Um, he had heard about the studio where I don't quote me on the on the facts, but um, from what I what I know, the the owner of the studio died in the seventies. And his kids didn't know what to do with it. So instead of selling it off and all that, they wanted to preserve his legacy. So they just kind of sealed it off. They just like just closed the door, shut it. And um, from, from what I know, they did some photo shoots and stuff like that throughout the years. But nothing with the actual gear. And uh, last year, right before we went in to do the record, Ross was like, hey, they're opening up this place again. They're going to polish it up, get the dust off, and and rework everything into its original state. And for me, that's terrifying because I understood, you know, all I heard was was tape, and you're going to mess it up. And like, then eventually die. And then eventually die. Like, you know, <laughs> the, what's the most famous quote of all time? Well, life sucks, and then you die. It's just... <laughs> um, so that whole analog experience was... It was crazy. Everything was to tape. Every sound on the record's mixed i have heartburn i'm gonna die like right now (laughs) everything was recorded mixed and mastered to tape which is nuts um we had some crazy players on it like brad wilk was he did all the drumming all the percussion and stuff like that um so it was i had never done anything like it and it had had a warmth to it a different atmosphere something that I hadn't had before in the past, so this song specifically, I wanted to see what we could do with this song in that environment, which is why we re-recorded it onto the new record as well. And I think it came out pretty cool. Definitely has this this looming vibe that just it's like a like a weight, like a just a burden almost, but not in a in a hold you back kind of way. Just it's dark. This song is a, it's called Hell and You. We're not going to start that. Not. Psych. When 
to the bar to get a little closer to myself and learn things I never really wanted to know. The walk got a little far, so I got into a cab that smelled like vinegar. Stains that showed what's in the girl before. But I want to be where all the stupid shit I say sounds so romantic and true. Cause I'd rot in hell with you If you just asked me to I love the shitty things we do together Live with me in this sin forever Hell and you I know you wanted to I say you take the shot See this chance Feel the fire And let me have this dance with you Oh, we take things a little far, but you couldn't name a place I wouldn't go with you. A plane, a train, a car I'd run. If I was dead, I'd float, I'd crawl in bed with you. Even on someone else's blood, on top of someone else's love. In the worst motel we find, cause home is the last place that I'd stand to be with anyone but you. Cause I'd rot in hell with you If you just asked me to I love the shitty things we do together Live with me in this sin forever Hell and you I know you wanted to I say you take the shot See this chance Feel the fire And let me have this dance with you Cause I'd rot in hell with you if you just asked me to, I love the shitty things we do together. Live with me in this sin forever, hell and you. I know you wanted to, I say you take the shot. See this chance, feel the fire, and let me have this dance with you. This has been great. Man, Danny, thank you for coming and doing this. We are live right now with Amigo, The Devil. Those were four songs. Two of them were off of Everything Is Fine, uh, uh, or three of them were off of Everything Is Fine. Two of them were off as volume one, but this was all accomplished in four songs. So thank you for pulling that off. And uh, man, travel safely. And wait, am I am I reading this right? That on May 3rd, you're in Jacksonville. And on May 4th, you're in Mexico City. And on May 5th, you're in Chicago. Yes. My goodness. All right. <laughs> well done. Um, and so all, the, all those dates are up at AmigoTheDevil.com. Um, you're mostly on the road um, all, all throughout May. There's a number of more dates announced beyond that. And uh, dude, best of luck. On, on everything is fine. Best of luck on the on the pre-sale and the release of, of volume one as well. Dude, thanks for coming and playing these songs for us today. Thank you. This was really special for us. So fanny also thank you. Us too, man. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>